Today I'm sharing the art of Yo-Yo Shinari, his rough sketches, um, his, his sketches in this book are very much, uh, the work looks very much like the way he approaches his animating, the way he actually draws when he animates his characters. If you ever see making of videos of Kill a Kill or Little Witch Academia, which he directed, uh, he's known as a storyboard artist and animator, um, and of course character designer. Uh, you'll see the way he draws and approaches drawing. You even see him teaching other people how to animate. This is pretty much how I draw, kind of like in a silhouette fashion. And it really works well for him. I think in general silhouettes uh, um, can work for a lot of people with uh, animating. Uh, you get the volume, you get the shapes quickly. You can fill in the details at different stages. Um, it's not as blocky, but on some levels, kind of reminds me of uh, Heinrich. Uh, Heinrich Clay. Heinrich Clay was an artist who was very popular. You know, here's some elephants. He uh, drew works for um, newspapers things like that. Disney sought after him. Uh, he wouldn't work for him. He didn't want to, he didn't want to work for Disney. So, um, and you know, you can see he's great at doing anthropomorphic characters. And uh, Disney was looking to do that very thing. You know, you can see in Fantasia, like the alligator characters or the elephant characters dancing around in Fantasia. That's the kind of things that this guy drew. So he was trying to seek after him, but he went on to do that anyway. Um, so not quite as blocky, but there's a similar feel or approach to the silhouette. And even just in general, uh, this guy Walt Stanchfield um, taught classes at Disney to all the animators to help them keep up, keep their chops, you know, and he would, he would, uh, ask them to draw something and then he would try and push the pose for them you know and help them push their work and there's a you know there's a general similarity to a lot of people who sketch whether it be caricature or animated um, characters uh, with few lines and sort of a you know, a blocky stick figure or silhouetted figures. And that's just because it lends itself to movement. You know, you can draw really quick, get the gesture or the pose of the character. And that, that really helps. Um, that really helps animating. Getting the nice poses. So some gestural and some caricature type stuff. So, you know, this these books, these two of them, they just him giving his uh, theories, all the notes that were collected over the years, his concepts on uh, drawing and animating and stuff like that. His theories were collected into books eventually. But um, there's a lot to glean from sketches like these. You know, they're fun. They're totally, you know, they feel like sketchbook drawings. But again, you don't always, it doesn't, the, the sketchbook drawings don't always look like the process art in everyone's work. Some people, 
yes, some people no. Um, it also depends on why you're sketching your sketchbook. Some people may write and draw. It may be more for concept ideas. It may be to practice um, the way they draw. So it just depends. If you just go straight right to it and, you know, this book, you know, appears more to be about the poses in different situation that the character may be in. Uh, sometimes you'll see some character design kind of stuff that looks more like it's motivated to show character design or conceptualized character designs. But here you'll see, you know, poses. This is from, you know, an animation he worked on. And um, Yoshinari, uh, along with the artists, they kind of fall more into the Kanada school of uh, animation. Uh, you know, the poses, you know, uh, it would be maybe on twos. And, uh, and also they work on a lot of TV stuff, so it has to have less poses because of smaller budget, but also just with uh, the graphics. And he'll, he'll use the punchy kind of poses. You know, if you've seen online, like comparisons of different sakuga, like in Evangelion, which he worked on. Um, you'll see like him drawing a mech fighting compared to like Isomitsuo or something. Um, and you'll see a very uh, big difference in the style of animating. One is almost um, straight ahead animating. Um, Yoyo Shinari is definitely a pose to bows kind of animator and the poses are extreme and pushed which is uh, fun and exciting but it may have let's say less weight than some like ESO uh, you know when you do straight ahead animation you're going to capture a lot of nuances and you'll feel the weight a certain way because it almost feels, not rotoscope, but it almost feels realistic. And then pose to pose, you know, you're, you're either inventing the pose or you're exaggerating the pose in such a way that when you draw anything in between, you have to, um, you're basically making up how a pose will begin and end, begin and end, and that will create a certain feel and look to the movement. Whereas if you do straight ahead, like uh, uh, Isomitsu, you know, you'll see um, a more gradual movement and therefore you'll feel weight uh, differently in the characters and in their movements. It almost ha it almost can feel like even if he is drawing on only twos or, or something like that, less poses than let's say a fully animated feature at 24 frames a second, it'll have, although it, it'll be a little more choppier, let's say, it's not the best way to describe it, um, but it'll still have a more fluid feeling to it uh, as if it were 24 frames a second. Just kind of like as if you, the way they do in computer animation, um, let's say in uh, Into the Spider-Verse, when um, Miles would fly around uh, with uh, Peter Parker, P Peter B. Parker, um, when they're first flying around together, he's trying to learn how to web sling. Uh, Peter Parker was animated on ones to show how natural and athletic and easily he did it and how used to it was miles uh they pull out frames they do it on twos you know so you, you pull out frames and that's kind of like how uh, mitsuo iso's kind of animation would look so it's still fluid uh compared to something on ones just a little choppier you feel a difference and then eventually when miles got it they threw him on ones and he was doing his web sling. Uh, this 
is something you'll see a lot in the way Yoshinari animates. Um, the way he figures things out, I you know I've, I've seen this a lot. The way he will do his silhouettes and the way he figures out his his movements for his characters. This is very typical of atypical of how he might think and draw. So you really get to see his process in the sketchbook when he's not necessarily even thinking of, you know, let's say a particular show. Although some of these, for instance, these characters, he definitely is. He's drawing boxes around these, thinking more about storyboarding panels and layout. You know, how a shot may go, how a scene may go. Gurn Lagan. These are definitely characters, you know, some of them from Gurn Lagan and the type, body types. You'll see uh, he's getting into more musculature here and here, and that's something you might find in books where uh, you know they're dealing with breaking down the body. Certain way muscle groups. Thinking more about the masses. The big masses, like a layered cake, you know, first the uh, the structure, then the masses of the of the of the uh, muscles, and then dividing up the muscles after. Something like these, or or this, feels a little bit. Like uh, Charles Bark or Jean uh, Leon Drone, the way they'd approach um, the simplicity of lines, and even the way they would uh, figure out uh, different poses, and even in the clothing. What little clothing, scant clothing these these uh, models have, but the drapery, the way that they'd figure it out, there's like a similarity in the approaches. So you can see, like you know, um, that even these guys were painters. They did classical painting. Uh, they came from a period called the Orientalist period which was just these um, European artists going over to the Asian, a, a, Asian uh, lands, landscapes, um, various uh, regions, and uh, depicting scenes quite realistically with uh, really nice, bold colors. But these simple designs and drawings are very helpful, and they, too, approaching this kind of work, simplicity in line, and they would study sculptures and things. So you can see the simple line here and then how they'd shade it. You can see here that they're copying busts or, or um, sculptures. So not only using live models, but sculptures. <clears throat> So it's a certain way of thinking uh, with animating, I think. Uh, everyone's got a different approach. But it's fun to look at some of your favorite creators and try and break down how they may, where they may be coming from and how they're breaking it down and even the origin of or their background 
uh, of their education or lack of education, but how they taught themselves, where they're coming from, is very helpful to um, maybe helping you find your own approach or developing the approach you already have that comes natural. Maybe you feel when you see these drawings, this is, it resonates with the way that you kind of think and you're wondering, you know, you have different questions about it. So trying to see where they, where their influences may come, or at least if they weren't influenced by the same things, things that uh, may feel similar to theirs, um, maybe you can't find too many answers other than studying it, um, looking deeper into the approach. Maybe by finding someone that has a similar approach, you could find out, like the, this book I just showed you, uh, they have a whole course on a specific way of, of drawing. Um, kind of like sight size method, if you've heard of that, sight size method. So um, that may be a way that helps you uh, approach, you know, or further your development in your endeavors, whether it be animation. If you're drawing, you may just love looking at art, love animation, and like to appreciate this stuff. It's a nice, uh, Clothing designs, simplicity in the the wrinkles. You can see the control in the uh, in the lines, as if he the as if he's drawn it many many times before. Um, even reminds me of what you'd see production designers do that study like industrial design. Um, in Akira, uh, this is a layout from the original movie, Akira. And if you look closely at these lines, um, there, it's a similar approach. There's a, there's a very, um, there's a confidence in the line and there's almost like they're drawing it almost like bone strokes. Like there's a, even though it's using, they're using mechanical pencil very clearly in here. You can see stitching, just a slight stitching, and a hook on the ends of their lines. <clears throat> and uh, you know, you'll see the form drawn out. And for instance, the torso is just drawn almost like a rectangle, but on an angle. Um, and then, you know, kind of like. Kind of like this. Just something simple. And, but then they'll add, you know, they'll add the arm. You let, you know, they'll add the arm with one line, you know, and then they'll add the clothing on top. You know, but very confidently and with single lines, without excess of line. Even the way he drew the number for the cut is handled in exactly the same way as the rest of it. Um, and if you look at a lot of other works, storyboards and layouts from artists on different shows like Naruto and all kinds of other shows. Not every artist is the same and I've seen, I've seen storyboards from Naruto looking completely different than like the layout drawings. But my guess is when they're doing the storyboards because it's a TV show and time restraints, they do spend a lot of less time, kind of like what you see in the studio trigger boards. You'll see it just really roughed out and it won't be as clean line or thought out uh, in single lines so neatly. Some people just have the habits so and no matter how they draw, they may draw that way, but um, they may just break out and get much rougher. Yoyo Shinori, seems like he kind of goes back and forth, you know, forth. He can, you know, he, even in his sketches, he may seem like he's doing those uh, very confident lines, 
Other times you may seem stitch more. Again, more of the anatomy, figure out the anatomy. You know, a lot of uh, artists that are doing things like animation and things, they may want to see some of the, either the clavicle or the, the shoulder blades uh, moving. You know, when they move the arm and the elbow, this thing will move up and down accordingly, or you won't see it at all if it's hit, you know, depending on if it's protruding from the muscles. And so drawing these little skeleton studies, you know, help figure that out. You can see he's attaching the uh, deltoid. In this case, it's the bone. Here's the bone with the deltoid muscles wrapped and attached into the... Uh, Shoulder blades, you'll see the same basic shapes here and here. They're just figuring out in the rib cage. So it's fun, you know. And here's like a study again, like of just slight shading. You know, a simple drawing of the knee. Uh, let's see. You see like here, there's no shading right underneath, but on the sides you see the lighting's coming from this way. Or even this, this is obviously more, uh, they spend more time uh, shading this. I think they used to you know, sprinkle uh, charcoal dust and move it around, but uh, you know, similar simplicity in the line even though he's drawing it rougher there and using hatching to shade it feels like a similar thinking to me and it seems like the way that Yoshinari thinks often is interlocking these shapes he kind of it seems like he finds where the where the bones and and or muscles would meet if he was studying uh, muscle groups and also where the bones are, let's say hips and other things, like here's pelvic bone. But um, but also just muscle groups you'll see like right here. And it seems like he likes to connect them, almost like puzzle pieces. Uh, and that may help him, by grouping it where he does, it may help him when he's animating the characters. This is a cool pose. I like some of these natural poses where they're just kind of leaning um, and, and they're not, I enjoy when he actually doesn't do the super amazing, perfect superhero pose and he kind of shows something in between. It's fun with him. You'll see more of that coming up. But um, here, here's some basic silhouette shapes. Where's that shot? Where's that? Reclining. These are pretty cool. I like those a lot. Here it is. So you can see, you know, uh, by looking at it very simply, and he just draws a circle there for the a combination of of the uh, hip, but also the uh, whole pelvic area. And then the knees just drop circles for those things so he can bend it easily and operate the, the character almost like a not a stick figure but something simple like that he draws round heads a lot here's more like a character designs but he's approaching it from like a silhouette looking at the different um, shape and form language of the characters and how they relate to each other size wise like a whole cast you know confident tall elongated more stocky younger little 
kid with some attitude fun loving kind of character you can tell very quickly with these rough sketches without much detail just by the pose by the shape and form language you know what kind of attitude they have kind of tough tiger type character and an eagle type character a bear that's obviously more playful and some kind of monkeyish type character it's angry you know this one's maybe a character you can tell by the hair covering her face that maybe she's uh, a little more you know internal and keeps to herself and shy and maybe that's a horse kind of you know hangs around her so you know you can tell a lot just by his gestural information because of the way he uses the shapes and how they compare to each other beautifully done Playing around with just different eye shapes. Fun creatures. Almost like a centaur, but with like lion's legs or something. And you're more like gorilla arms. One of the earlier characters beating up some monster. Far more designy. That looks more like something you'd see in Pantheon stocking or something. These kind of designs. Pointier, sharper. You know, you see the bat here. So he's using that language of the bat in the design of her hair and her umbrella. And even in the spider, the umbrella uh, handle. And the bottom of the clothing. Carrying it over here. This little... Uh, dress and the kink in the in the hair. These are more character designs. It seems like studies. This is fun. This. You know, without the headdress and this uh, spear, feels a lot like his designs and the way he would draw for Little Witch Academia. <clears throat> Same proportions and uh, the way he would silhouette it. When he animates those characters, it's pretty much what you see. By paying attention, I think, to the silhouettes, I think you can really knock out, you know, something like this. Instead of having too, mu too many separate moving parts on the body, you can really focus on the movement first and then go back in and analyze it, see if he likes it before uh, making other passes at it. At least that's what it seems like when you watch him animate. Whether it be roughing something or, or cleaning something up a little bit. Superhero type character. She's got super strength. She's lifting a car. Maybe an afterthought. The way he drew it. They have peg holes for animation paper registration. You know, this Oxberry and Acme, one has all holes. One has the long and short to hold it in better. This would hold it in better. But the other kind, you can just buy any hole punch and get any Xerox paper and hole punch it. And then you have it. 
um, but it will it is a little looser and not exact but uh, this way um, registers it better it holds it in tighter but the hole punch for this is very expensive If you ever watch Warner Brothers cartoons, you'll hear, you'll see on a lot of like, with Wildy e. Coyote, you'll see like he's always getting all kinds of equipment to get, go after the Roadrunner called Acme. That comes from the, Ac the Acme type peg bars that the animators used. So he just called everything he used from the company Acme. It's an actual company, produces animation products, supplies. This is fun. These flowery shapes carried over into the hairstyle and even the feet and fingers, the sausagey type fingers, even the ear, just the language is used throughout the whole uh, character design. You can see uh, my characters like that uh, from Yoshinori's designs from an animated show. You saw it earlier in the book. This character. This is an illustration by Yo Yoshinori. So Although these designs are kind of more truncated, almost like the chibi, closer to chibi style or just simplistic style, maybe for younger audience or more cartoony story. Um, these characters almost remind me of the Pantheon stocking, like even their, their leader a little bit. This cool design. These are more fun. This is almost something you'd see in uh, American comics in earlier days. Uh, the type of mouth, and in Japanese, you know, even something that uh, something Miyazaki may have done in earlier days when he was doing TV. A lot of characters had this kind of look, and actually. You know, when you uh, look at other works of Yo Yoshinari, you'll see that he was influenced and inspired by uh, Osamu Tezuka, and his designs would have this kind of uh, shape, language, and design. Kind of fun stuff. You even see like the scientist type character. Which again, some of this crosses over into Kill a Kill, uh, not quite as necessarily. Fun cartoony, but definitely some of these designs and the eyes, nose, and the mouth handling is seen uh, the toy's father, which uh, Tenketsu, Tenketsu, the the clothing she wears, you know, has that eye patch and the the uh, bow, which looks like the father's eye patch and mustache, designed after the father. Again, more of these fun designs with the big wide open mouth and the uh, simple chunky teeth. I like this, uh, these robot arms he's got going. He's got a little bit of that Kanata school uh, graphic design and the energy pulsation coming out of the out of your hand. A 
lot more uh, cartoony expression. You'll see this stuff definitely in uh, Little Witch Academia, the uh, facial expressions and designs and the uh, exaggerated poses. These fun shapes and designs, the way it's composed, the body. Yoshinari, he can, he's a really, he's a high technician draftsman. He just, he can, he's a really strong draftsman. That's one of his major strengths as an animator and as a layout artist. Um, he, can, he can draw any style easily. He's worked on a lot of shows, you know, all the trigger shows, Gynax and production IG and all kinds of other shows he's animated in. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll be the one that animates and oversees those intros, those complicated, amazing intros you'd see in Gurren Lagann or Kill a Kill. And uh, in Little Witch Academia, there's quite a number of exciting uh, action scenes that he didn't necessarily uh, draw, but he would oversee it and correct anything yet he'd have to correct. He's playing with the skeletal, comparing it to the drawing. He's getting almost more realistic. Starting to play with some expressions and anger and characters interacting again here. So it says Gynax here. Enjoy his simple loose stuff a lot. You can learn a lot from it. A little bit of shading study. Playing with almost continuous contour lines, which allows you to capture lighting at the same time as the um, features of an object. helps you observe uh, both seeing seeing the features having planes makes it easier to see that when you play around with drawing continuous contour or using contour techniques these various contour techniques allow you to observe something in a different way than you might normally observe it here's a nice example of uh, the shading versus the, you know, the uh, the negative space versus the shadow, he just lets it drop off. Starting to get into shadowing a little more with this character. It's 
Character's cool too. Playing around with designs for the eyes. Really clean and simple. It's very nice. It's kind of combining human turning into some sort of creature. square design you don't see him do this too often where he just draws a cross on the face these definitely have a feel like the little fish Academia. When he draws, again, like interlocking muscle groups, um, that's how he approached uh, sketching uh, Mac for Evangelion. Very similar. You can see the way the the chest, the shoulders are, the arms, same approach. Muscle groups in an angular form. These are nice, simple designs, you know, yet complicated poses to draw with all the overlapping shapes, the uh, wrists and the hands wrapped around the legs, one on top of each other. You know, seems easy enough or simple enough because how simply he approaches it, makes it look, but quite difficult. But with silhouetting again, it, it does help a lot solves a lot of problems without necessarily having to have all the knowledge to draw anatomy. Of course he has that knowledge, but <clears throat> you can animate using silhouette without having that knowledge. You could just see proof of that when you look at um you know cartoon characters this wouldn't be the best example, but you know, these are basic shapes. But if you understand just, you know, circles and, you know, squash circles and, uh, you can just move the shapes around, worry about the details later. These are all fun. Elbow bone. The deltoid above the bicep. I mean the tricep.
displays weight. If you took away the box, which you know you can clearly see by the light line again, that he just added that in afterward. It was more about the pose to capture the feeling as if he's got weight on him. It's even got the toes spread out. Nice detail of the hand. I like these a lot. This feels like, like let's say you just got off the ground or you're about to fall and you keep running. Kind of like these. Turning a corner maybe. This guy's like you know, Kung Fu or Tai Chi artist. Nice twisting of the hand. You can't see that one right here. Twisting of the hand. Very expressive. Nice muscles. so many approaches to hands and you can see he's try, trying out many many ways of drawing hands sometimes his hands almost look like Bridgman hands other times it almost looks more like uh, the Charles Bark hands So I definitely see when I look at his sketches like two main ways, the key ways that he kind of approaches you know, shapes. Again, muscle insertion and angular shapes. And then the more rounded characters, just very simple rounded shapes. Some animal, animal hijinks going on. That's nice. This reminds me of like Rico Lebrun sketches. If you ever seen the Disney artist from like the fifties. He taught anatomy design for like four-legged creatures and such, and uh, in a very simple, methodical way of drawing uh, skeletons and things like that. Starting again to like almost Evangelion heads, cars. These vehicles almost look like the helmets. The way he's approaching designs. Now we're getting to neck.
again, this is kind of the thought process of grouping muscles. You know, you got the zygomatic arch here, jawbone. So he's just taking what, what he knows of anatomy and the groupings of the bones and the muscles, just kind of using that to help him create separations or cut lines for the uh, robot faces or masks. Also can help you draw things on different angles more clear. And you can always you know, simplify the lines after. Getting more like observational texture almost going on. Samurai. Looks almost like a cop or something. It's a samurai, also. He's getting into hatching for nature elements. Simple, simplified landscapes. These kind of things is it looks like how he approaches the sketches for again a uh, little witch academia. If you look at some of the artwork from production art and uh, for that show, you can see the little castles. I don't know when he drew these, but this could be anything. I do know he had a sketchbook from an earlier time period with, I believe, possibly some of these sketches, and they added to it to make it a bigger book. Or it could just be he created a whole new book with other sketches. His special effects are pretty cool. Um, he started developing a special effects library that he just creates in his spare time, building it up. Because of the digital tools, you know, he can just resize, reuse them, double it up, do all kinds of things, use it at his, at his disposal, creating his own library. And since they use similar designs in their shows, particularly the special effects, they already have a stylization all their own. You can just pull it out and use it. Because lately they've been going digital, like with cyber, uh, Cyberpunk Edge run, Runner. The, uh, what they were doing before, which was all hand drawn traditional. So that's uh, the art of Yo Yo Shinari rough sketches. Check out the book. It's a fun thing to study. Back to your regularly scheduled